Hey, so I've been struggling creatively recently. And one of the things they tell you to do when you can't think of what to do is just to make something small. So I decided to join a game jam, which if you don't know, is just a game making competition where you generally make a game around a set theme and in a certain period of time. The jam's not important, but what is, is the themes. And for this jam, they're ghosts and death is not the end. And because we're making something small, I decided to go really, really, really small. This weekend, we're making a game for the Game Boy Color. Invented in 1988 by John Japan, the Game Boy Color was made to combine his three loves. Games, colors, and... You, you don't care about any of that. You just need to know that it's old, we're making a game for it, and there are going to be some challenges along the way. Oh, and we're not making it from scratch. We'd have better luck making it in scratch and porting it to a console. Which, which you can't do, by the way. I'm making it in a weekend, so we're going to use the best engine for making Game Boy games at the moment. GB Studio. So we boot it up, make a new project, and because this engine is goated, we've already got a floating arrow. Now to make a game. I've been playing a load of puzzle games recently. Simple ones, where you just collect items and then give them to a person, who will then give you a new item for you to give to someone else and get a new item and so on and so forth. Riveting stuff, but what they lack in gameplay, they make up for in charm and humor. And so for a while, I've wanted to make one, but how do we incorporate ghosts and death is not the end into this genre? Picture this. You're a rich guy and you just bought a brand new house in the middle of the woods. But then, you're carrying a box. Bang! Lightning strikes. It's so over. But wait, the house is haunted, so you don't really die. Instead, you become half ghost, half man. And you have to use your were-ghost abilities, if you will, to convince your family that the house is haunted. Each one needs a different kind of evidence until they believe you. And so it'll create some unique puzzles, I guess. Easy stuff. So, let's do some drawing. And with this nice main hall for our mansion setting, I'm sure everything will go perfectly. Oh. Alright, let's understand how colours work on the Game Boy Color. Backgrounds can have four colours per 8x8 tile, but this can be overloaded with sprites to add an extra three colours, which is how we get games like this. But that's more memory intensive, and you can only have so many sprites per line, so we're just not going to worry about it. We're also limited to only having eight palettes of four colors. So a background can only have a max of 32 colors, but that would mean that every single color palette has to be unique. So when we look at our background, we can see that there's five colors just in this middle tile, which means obviously we're gonna have to scrap some of the data and simplify the sprite a bit. Then there's the issue of the palettes. If we look at the edge of our house here, we can see that this doesn't quite have the same colors as the tiles next to it. And that's because we want our grass tile to be this, while our building tile has four of its own unique colors. So we kind of have to have this blend in between palette, which eliminates a bunch of our colors, bringing it down from 32 total to just 29. So, how did they do it so crazy? Well, I wouldn't have known any of this if I didn't do some research and look at online and the past work that people had done. Some old nerds had really put a lot of time thinking about this, because it was all the rage. <laughs> and so that's why all the games are a lot, lot simpler. You can definitely see all the color palettes and the lines between all the tiles. And then the later games. Pfft. Banana? Monkey? Are you seeing this? 
uh, you really can't tell the difference between any of the tiles, any of the palettes. You can tell that there's a limit on the colors, but it's just crazy. How, how did they do that? How? So we could do some fancy procedures with the memory and get some other extra little benefits, but we need to remember that we don't care that much. We don't have that much time and we're pretty new to this engine. And so this is what our background ends up looking like. It's nothing super special, but you can see that the sprites have their own color, which kind of amplifies them. It's, a, it's like the Game Boy equivalent of painting them yellow, which we all know everyone loves. And yeah, that's how the colors ended up working in the game. And with all that out of the way, it's time for some gameplay. All we need to do for this is sprinkle an annoying wife here, a couple ghosts here, a graveyard here, and an idiot son there. GB Studio is a pretty visual language, so coming up with all the logic is pretty easy. Just for every item we save it as a variable, and then we just check a variable when the player interacts with someone. So you pick up the camera, the has camera variable is true, and when you talk to the ghost, if the player has the camera, then they'll run and hide. But if the player doesn't, they'll just laugh at you. And we just need to do this for all the interactions for all the variables. But now it's time to go ghost. Well, actually, go man, because I added the ghost first. Now, the problem is, we can either check if the player is a human or a ghost on every single interaction, but the logic will become really confusing, and we'd also need to work out how to change the sprites mid-scene and how to map a button to change those sprites, or we can just duplicate everything and have a teleport pad that changes you between the realms. I went with that option. It should be a lot easier, but we just need to remember that every change we make to one realm, we need to make to another. And now we can change the color of the backgrounds for each of the worlds. Wow, that's it, it's a game. But there's, there's something missing. Something that would really make it a Game Boy game. Something that, you know, really put it in a world, something that would, something that would give it... We need a title sequence to ensure that everyone understands the background of the game. There are a handy little preamble to set the scene, and because we make games backwards, I guess, we're making it now that we've actually finished the game. These are an essential part of any Game Boy game, because instead of adding gameplay, why not just add a wall of text? Think Pokemon and Professor Oak who will not stop yapping at you. And they're super easy to implement. All we need to do is just some drawing and then we just implement it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy... What the f*** is that? Each scene can only hold 384 tiles in the VRAM or visual RAM. So in each background we're limited to how many tiles we can have because this space is also used for text and other GB Studio stuff. This is why games like Pokemon have loads of repeating trees and buildings and roads and stuff. But GB Studio isn't optimized for the Game Boy Color and so we can actually only have 192 tiles with some extra space for the text. And so when the game needs to load more text, it ends up overriding our background tiles. Which is why we get it looking how it does. So the solution? Simplify the background and reuse some tiles. So we just get rid of these trees because they're not actually visible anyway. And we have to get rid of our bird. And then also just copy some branches and flip them because they're technically the same tile. And with all these changes, we're able to get the images down to the right size. And then, after I release the game, Chibi Studio comes out with its new 4.0 update, which allows you to have 384 and use all the tiles for the Game Boy Color, and you can use the color only mode, and it's got loads of optimizations. But that's fine, I don't care, that's fine, I'll just, I'll just optimize my assets. And now we have a finished game. The best paranormal detective wear ghost simulator puzzler that's ever existed for the Game Boy Color. And the worst, I guess. I drew up some extra assets to make the game page look nicer and submitted it to the jam. And before I tell you how I did, I'm sure you're wondering. How small is it? 
Is it just the number that was in the title or thumbnail? Did it, or was it, was it bigger? Was it, was it smaller? Did I manage to crunch it down even smaller? And no, it's just the number in the thumbnail. Um, yeah, 44 kilobytes. The actual file says 128, but I'm pretty sure that's just because of how GB Studio exports it. And so it was 44 kilobytes. And when we look at the actual size of a Game Boy Color game, which can be four megabytes, we can see that it's a hundredth the size that it could have been. But hey, it's small, it's our game, and who cares? Moral of the story is, uh, make something small, make games. Uh, it got 13th place, by the way. Not the best, but hey, it was fun to make, and that's all that matters.